I bought this Rough Rider four years ago and I've put about 3,000 rounds through it. I've learned a lot about this pistol and there's a few things I don't really care for, but overall I still really like this gun. The Rough Rider is a really sweet looking little pistol. It's got a really pretty look to it. Hey everybody, Jordy here at Gun Tradition and I'm glad you're watching today. Now the biggest negative to this pistol in my opinion is the bluing. On all of the aluminum here, this is an aluminum framed pistol, all the way around here, trigger guard and through the handle, that's all aluminum. But the bluing on the aluminum is a little bit light duty. It's pretty light duty bluing and it wears off fairly easily if you're going to be carrying this around very much. The bluing on the steel parts, the barrel and the cylinder, that holds out. That's, that's pretty durable. But the bluing that's on the aluminum, it's, it's something different and it wears off well. So they do start really, really pretty in the case. But if you're going to carry it around a lot or keep it in the glove box of your truck where it's going to get roughed up, it will really start to get torn up and just look really weathered and scratched up. That's my biggest gripe about this pistol. My biggest compliment on this pistol is its trigger. The trigger is a very nice, well-made, single-action style trigger. Single action, so I have to pull the hammer back before I can fire it. I can't just shoot it. But the trigger is very nice, about two and a half to three pounds of weight on that trigger. Yeah, very, very lightweight little trigger. And it's a very clean, sharp and crisp trigger. These generally have very good triggers akin to what you'd expect on a nice Colt pistol. In fact, this pistol, the inner workings of it, is basically mirrored after the Colt design. They're actually a 7 8 size replica of the Colt design. They're, they're copycats, just a little bit smaller. So they are very sturdy and they are very well made. The, the trigger parts, the timing mechanisms, they're all very, very well made. Now I've got one more complaint about this pistol and that is the ejector rod. Let me open this up here so I can show you what I mean. When I'm ejecting spent casings, got to open the loading window, pull the hammer back the first two clicks, and now it's free to spin. Well, you got to use the ejector rod. Push this little lever here, and it slides the rod out. See that? The problem I have with it is that the lever on the ejector rod is plastic. Now, it seems like it actually does hold up pretty well, because I do have 3,000 rounds through this, and I've been carrying it quite a lot. But I... I just am nervous about that being plastic. That, that's all. If this were to, to snap on me, I could see that happening because it's plastic. That is the weakest point of the gun right there, is the ejector rod. But, like I said, I've got 3,000 rounds through this, and I've been carrying it and toting it around for four years in my backpack anytime I go fishing or camping or out in the woods, and it does seem to hold up. I do have to say that this pistol still impresses me every time I go out and shoot it today. It's a accurate, fun shooting little bugger. Now, let's talk about the sights. This has the traditional old fashioned revolver style sights where it's got a front blade and it doesn't really have a classic notch. It's got kind of more, it's, it's got a notch, but it's a real wide kind of curving shallow notch. It's not designed like modern sights for precision shooting are. That being said, I can still shoot clay pigeons at 50 yards on a good day with this. Generally, I'm more a a uh, water jug at 50 yards kind of guy, which is still not bad for a single action revolver that I paid $140 for. The best part of all about this pistol, in my opinion, is that I have the 22 Magnum cylinder for it as well. This is 22 long rifle, but if I just go back to clicks, push this and pull this, I can pop that out and I can pop in my 22 Magnum cylinder. Put the rod back in. There. Now I got a 22 Magnum 6 shooter. I love the 22 Magnum because out of this 6.5 inch barrel, that brings the power of this 22 up to that of my 22 rifle at home. So I can shoot this revolver with the same power I can as my 1022, as long as I have the Magnum cylinder. That didn't come with this pistol. I bought it extra from the company for about $33. And you can do that anytime if you buy one of these pistols. They have a little mail-in card that you can fill out, mail it into the company, and they'll send you 
the 22 Magnum revolver cylinder, which is awesome. This pistol comes in both six shot and nine shot revolvers. Personally, I kind of wish I would have held out for the nine shot because it's 50% more ammo capacity, which I am all about increasing your ammo capacity. That's, I love the idea of a nine shot revolver. But I gotta say, the six shot's still not bad. This is not a defensive handgun, not something you should ever consider using in any defensive or home defense type scenario unless you are really desperate and have no other option. But don't plan on getting one of these pistols as a home defense gun. Please do not. It's a really bad choice. That being said, if you want a gun just to go to the shooting range, to go plinking, maybe take it out uh, on your trap line. I used to use this a lot on my trap line when I was coon trapping. Shot a lot of raccoons and possums with it. I shot some rabbits with it. That is really hard, by the way, trying to shoot a running rabbit with a pistol. I'm not gonna try that again, but I did get one. If you're not very familiar with revolvers, I do wanna make one point clear. When you're shooting a revolver, you have to be aware of the cylinder gap. That is the front portion of the cylinder. As you're shooting, gas exits through the front end of the cylinder here. Gas with unburned powder, and usually a, a few small lead fragments also come out of here off of the bullet. So you wanna be careful not to have your hands anywhere near the front of that cylinder. It's the same thing as if you have a shotgun or a rifle that's ported or has a muzzle brake on the end. It's got big holes in the barrel on the end. If you were to grab onto those, that's gonna tear your hand apart when you fire. It's the same thing with the front of a revolver cylinder when you fire, and I'm gonna show you what I mean here. I've got a piece of paper, piece of notebook paper that I've got doubled over four times. And I'm gonna fire a round of my 22 long rifle here and show you what I mean about that cylinder gap. Woo! Needless to say, keep your fingers away from the front of the cylinder gap. With the 22 long rifle, it's not likely to do the damage that a 357 or a 44 Magnum would do, but it still has a very high potential to cut well into your fingers and no, that's not why I have band-aids. I was building a swing set yesterday, so you know how that goes. Keep your fingers away from the front of this cylinder. Don't do anything stupid like fire it close to your face because that will cut right into your eyeball. You want to keep it a little bit away from your body. Just point it away. It's not ultra dangerous. It's not going to get you. But you've got to keep your hands behind. You hold here, you don't hold your safety back. This does have a safety, by the way. You don't hold up here. You don't hold around the cylinder. You can support this hand any way you want, but you don't go further than this trigger area here. Right there, I don't go further than where the trigger is with my support hand. See, that's fine, nothing. But if I put my fingers up here and fired, or if I had some fingers hanging, if I have my hand up too far, you can't do that. It'll cut through your skin and it is going to hurt. I will say again that I really love the Heritage Rough Rider revolver. If you are interested in these, go and check out Heritage Manufacturing online and you can look at all of their pistols. They actually make a lot of big bore pistols too. I like their 357. It's pretty neat. They have all kinds of different grips. You can get this classic revolver grip. You can get the bird head grip, which is a little shorter and round on the bottom. You can get the pearl grips, this snake skin print. There's the USA flag, all kinds of stuff in different colors. It's pretty neat. And if you just want a very functional pistol, it's not going to cost you much. You want to just shoot cheap 22 ammo, maybe 22 Magnum. Go ahead and consider this revolver. I'm going to give it four out of five stars, which basically means I'll have it any day of the week. I like this gun. I like this pistol a lot, and if you're liking this video a lot so far, consider clicking that like button because it's going to help me get more good information out to you guys. Now, back to pistols. If you have any questions on how to swap the cylinders or clean this pistol, actually the first video I ever recorded was on that topic, so go over to my videos page and just scroll to the very bottom, way down in the cobwebs, and you'll find it. That'll tell you everything you need to know about how to break down this pistol, clean it up, get it back together, and get it in good working order. Now I'm going to do a little target shooting. Time for some plinking.
Well, I'm out here on public lands today, so I've got to go pick up all my confetti here. I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to look around for more good information. I'll catch you later. Bye now.